I'm Susan McGinnis with Energy Now. Joining me now from Philadelphia to talk about the energy picture in Pennsylvania and the nation is Pennsylvania Governor Ed Rendell. Mr. Governor, thank you so much for joining us. My pleasure, Susan. And we appreciate it. I want to start with an energy issue that it figures most prominently for your state in the last part of your term, and that is natural gas from shale. Uh, the Marcellus Shale is largely in Pennsylvania. It's, it's among the largest reserves we have of natural gas. How large does the Marcellus figure into Pennsylvania's and also the nation's energy picture? Well, I think natural gas is a, is a huge plus for America. We are the Saudi Arabia of natural gas, and if we can find a way to to uh, uh, get it out of the ground safely and environmentally friendly, uh, it's a huge upside for us. So the, the problem is shale drilling is very, very difficult because it requires a new type of drilling where you have to uh, uh, break up the, the stone. It's very hard uh, uh, shale. You have to break it up and then you've got to use water to flush it out. Uh, the frack water can be environmentally harmful if it's not controlled correctly. It used to be a process that was so expensive that it simply didn't make sense. But the technology has advanced to the point where it now is, is uh, achievable to get it out of the ground at a relatively fair price. So the upside economically for the Commonwealth is unbelievable. There's a Penn State study that says in a decade there could be 100,000 well-paying jobs uh, produced by the shale industry and shale drilling in Pennsylvania, shale drilling and distribution. But the downside is significant. We've seen a, a number of explosions. We've seen groundwater polluted. Uh, we've passed uh, a more stern and, and uh, severe and strict regulations to control it. It's a balancing test, and we've got to get the balance right. Um, but I think uh, there are those who want to call for an entire moratorium on, on drilling period in the, in the state. I'm against that, and the legislature is against that. We've got to find a way to balance the uh, two competing interests here, and I think they can be balanced. And that's a tough job for the governor. You've really had to navigate um, both sides of that issue, these tremendous new resources with the controversy, the envir environmental concerns. Do you think Pennsylvania uh, is adequately and can adequately protect uh, residents from the negatives that you mentioned about uh, you know, fracking water? Most of this is about um, possible contamination of drinking water. That's where the concern lies. Or do you think we need federal regulation? Well, first of all, I think we're doing a good job because uh, both sides uh, don't like us. <laughs> so that's the clearest indication we're doing a good job. I think the answer is yes. We can do it. This shouldn't be a federal issue. It should be a state issue. We can do it, and I think we are doing it. Uh, um, we, as I said, we've passed new regulations on the amount of biosolids that can be discharged into uh, uh, any sort of water. Uh, we've uh, passed construction standards to eliminate the, or, or reduce the possibility of uh, incidents. We have uh, sent out uh, uh, fines. I mean, we're fining uh, the drilling companies like one and a half violations a day, uh, and we're trying to drive them into a better mindset when it comes to compliance. They're chewing up roads in local governments, and that's why we tried to enact a fair and a reasonable shale tax. Unfortunately, the shale companies spread a lot of money around the legislature. Our, our Senate pro tem president got $143,000 from shale companies uh, before last year's election. So well, they beat back our efforts to enact a reasonable shale tax, even though some of the major companies wanted a reasonable tax to take care of local government, to take care of the environmental challenges, to make sure we've got the resources to protect the environment. It was a, a sort of a bizarre action by mostly the Republican Senate. A shell tax did pass the House. So uh, the next governor and the next legislature have to get that right, although unfortunately the next governor, Governor-elect Tom Corbett, who's a good man, but he took a pledge during the campaign to have no shale tax. Again, the shale interest contributed nearly a million dollars to his campaign, and it raises all sorts of questions. But uh, we need to have some way to compensate local governments and some way to protect the environment. I want to talk a little bit more about some other forms of energy because, you know, gas reserves are really only part of uh, Pennsylvania's energy arsenal. You have major coal reserves, nine nuclear plants. You've worked very hard at bringing renewable companies in, some, some international companies locating there, Gamesa and uh, Iberdrola. Uh, give me a sense of Pennsylvania's r role in the nation's energy picture. Well, interestingly, despite what you said, and we do have a, a wealth of different type of re energy resources, and in terms of renewables, we rank third, according to the Pew Center for the States, in green energy jobs produced in the last eight years, uh, only behind Texas and California. Uh, despite all of that, Pennsylvania still imports $30 billion of energy into our state 
to run our cars and, and heat our homes, etc. So uh, we have a challenge, and the challenge is somewhat similar to the challenge of the nation. Traditional energy, natural gas, coal, can it be done in a way that isn't harmful to the environment? Can we continue to produce those two huge sources of energy, which America and Pennsylvania have in abundance? That's v very crucial. We have to find a way to properly sequester, capture and sequester the carbon that's produced from burning coal. If we do that, again, the sky's the limit for Pennsylvania and for America because we have more coal than virtually anybody else. Uh, but at the same time, we've got to diversify our portfolio. We just permitted the state DEP, an additional nuclear plant to be built by PPNL at an existing site. So we're not siting a new plant. We're just extending capacity at that existing site. Uh, we just permitted a new hydro uh, plant, mm -hmm. also by PPNL, because hydro is underused in America. As you know, Canada gets about 60% of its uh, electricity from hydro. We have every bit as many uh, waters and waterways as Canada does. We get, I think, 8 or 9% as a country out of our, our uh, uh, hydro production. Ironically, there's a firm in Pennsylvania, uh, Voith Siemens, who produces uh, the, these big machinery that's part of uh, hydroelectric. And up until recently, they were selling almost exclusively outside of the country. Uh, so we need to diversify, and we certainly need to continue the emphasis that our administration has made on renewables, on solar and wind and geothermal, and all sorts of uh, 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 energy from uh, the gas that comes from landfills. There's so many things out there that can help us produce energy in an environmentally positive way, we've got to continue that push. And I would like to see the president and the Congress do the same. And w so when it comes to the future of transportation, looking at Pennsylvania as this microcosm of the country, trying to work towards energy independence as the nation is, what do you see for the, the future of powering this nation's vehicles? I know you've done a lot of work with CNG vehicles and encouraging those, incentivizing those. Also, you're, you're expanding in nuclear. Do you see the future as electrifying the transportation sector, or do you see a, a basket of alternatives? Yeah, I think it's got to be a basket of alternatives. First of all, natural gas vehicles. Even though natural gas isn't a renewable fuel, it's certainly environmentally superior to uh, putting uh, fossil fuel in your cars to run it. Uh, so I think this nation should begin transforming, particularly large fleets, uh, to uh, natural gas, to CNG vehicles, and we need to build a better distribution system for that. That's number one. But number two, I think uh, there's great uh, potential for um, battery-operated electric vehicles. And uh, I saw what uh, Jeff Immelt, who I think is one of the most visionary CEOs in the country, I saw what he's doing. He's transforming the entire GE fleet to uh, electric battery-operated uh, vehicles. That's a step in the right direction. But I think we also have to look at, in that basket, uh, biodiesel. Uh, biodiesel has enormous potential. Uh, uh, mm -hmm. Biofuels, Pennsylvania is one of the leaders in producing biofuels. More ethanol, particularly cellulosic ethanol, in our automobiles. Ethanol, again, infinitely cleaner than burning petroleum, uh, and it can be done in a cost-effective way. So I think if you look at biodiesel, uh, ethanol, electric uh, hybrids, battery-operated, uh, natural gas vehicles, we can wean ourselves off of foreign oil. But to do it, it's going to take a concerted and focused national effort. The states can do a lot, and we have done a lot in California. It's done a lot, and other states have as well. But it has to be a concerted natural effort. Certainly. National when effort. you talk about when you when you talk about uh, electricity powering uh, this much of transportation, where does this leave coal, Governor? I mean, the, the fourth biggest producer in the country is, is Pennsylvania. Uh, Secretary Chu has said he sees coal as his worst nightmare. He has said, um, "Where do you see?" Uh, where do you see a coal? Do you think we need to move away from coal, both for electricity and for industries like steel? Well, I, I don't think we can move away from coal right now. That's not a viable alternative. And because we have so much coal, it's like natural gas, we have to work hard and spend our dollars trying to find a way to produce coal in a, in a more environmentally friendly way. Uh, I, I think we can do that. Uh, um, coal gasification, uh, I think, has been fairly successful in, in, in other countries, and we have one or two projects in the U.S. Uh, I think finding ways to capture and sequester the carbon that comes from the production of coal, if we could do that, then that opens up incredible new vistas for coal. And I don't think we can turn our back on any of our natural resources. When you're in the energy game, I think you said it very well, that we have to have a basket of alternatives. 
And we, when we look at the things that we possess that are plentiful, it's natural gas and coal right at the top of those things. Nuclear has to play a part because I know people don't like nuclear in many regards, but it produces zero pollution into the air. So we've got to look at making nuclear more safe. Hydro, as I said, it used to be hydro killed aquamarine life. Now we've got these sophisticated fish lotters, so hydro has to be a part of what we have. And of course, America's blessed with an incredible amount of waterways, so hydro could be a real answer for us. So, but we need the Congress and the President to sit down, forget about cap and trade right now because there aren't the votes for cap and trade, but we can pass a dedicated and focused energy bill to help us produce new forms of energy, to incentivize that production, and at the same time, research into how to to get natural gas and coal as resources in an environmentally more friendly way. I think we've got to do all those things at the same time because demand, and we also have to conserve. And I'm very proud that in Pennsylvania we passed a bill which requires significant conservation by the utilities uh, in a few short years. And if they don't do it, they'll be subject to hundreds of thousands of dollars and millions of dollars of fines. So I think all of those things have to be in our basket. Mm -hmm. But demand is going to go up. Even with conservation, demand is going to go up. Um, is your state converting any of its older coal plants, retiring or converting them? Yeah, we're, we're trying to, we've converted a number of them to the cleaner coal technology. And there is cleaner coal technology. We're working on a number of coal gasification plants, which again, are a superior way to, to produce uh, uh, energy, electricity, uh, non-sulfur diesel fuel from coal. You also, ha as governor, have had to navigate this divide between the, the older fossil fuels, more established energies, and these fledgling uh, renewables industries. Uh, do you believe that the renewables need to be subsidized, and for how much longer? Oh, sure. Uh, we've been subsidizing the production of fossil fuel forever, and we don't need to subsidize the production of renewables. If I were king of the uh, USA, the first thing I would do is pass a national energy portfolio standard. So by 2020, the nation has to be using X amount of its electricity has to come from renewables. So, uh, that would be number one. Number two, I would put a robust loan guarantee program in for the production of renewable and alternative energy. And the good thing about a loan guarantee program, if you put $100 billion into the loan guarantee program, it's likely that that will only cost the, tax, cost the taxpayers 70 or 80 billion by the time it's over because there's a fairly uh, low default rate on loan guarantees, uh, particularly if they're invested wisely. Uh, thirdly, uh, I want to make the, uh, the R&D tax credit for renewables uh, permanent. Uh, it is for fossil fuel right now. Renewables have to go and get a t tax credit renewed every year or two. It makes it impossible for Wall Street to make significant investments until that tax credit is permanent. Those things uh, alone would uh, tremendously hype up the production of renewables in this country. Natural gas, I'd like to see presidential leadership where the federal government says in five years our entire fleet is going to use natural gas vehicles. Can you imagine what that would do for the natural gas distribution industry? It would pump it up and then states could follow suit and large companies could follow suit and we could say goodbye to uh, millions of barrels of oil that we import from countries that don't really like us to American produced natural gas. Well, it sounds like uh, you, you believe that the administration, Secretary Chu, uh, have a way to go to, to really get energy policy right for this country. Well, they, they do, although I think Secretary Chu is the single best appointment by the president, and I think he's got a very good cabinet. Secretary Chu is a real visionary. Um, I think the administration was, was stalled because there was a legitimate chance to get cap and trade. It got through the House. But now I think with cap and trade probably politically dead, mm -hmm. I think we ought to get together, the administration, Democrats and Republicans in Congress, and see if we can come up with a bill that will produce uh, incentives for homegrown American energy and for renewable and, and alternative forms of energy. Uh, Governor, your name has been tossed around in the past for energy secretary, uh, among other things. <laughs> if that position became available again, can you see yourself in the cabinet? No, I can't. And let me say this. Um, although I've done a lot with energy in Pennsylvania, I probably know about one one hundredth of what Secretary Chu knows about uh, energy. How about uh, other positions besides energy? Nah, I mean, really, uh, I've been in government uh, for 33 years now. 
Um, and uh, although I hope to continue to be in a position to speak out on issues, particularly infrastructure issues, um, I, I think there's probably nothing that, that would interest me, particularly in the federal government. I sure as heck don't want to be a senator mm -hmm. after being a district attorney, mayor, or governor. I'd be bored stiff being a senator. My apologies to the 100 <laughs> senators. But, uh, <laughs> Do you see yourself remaining in energy circles in any way? Sure. Um, I, I hope to maybe advise uh, uh, companies or, or, or hedge funds or investors because I think there's tremendous upside to energy per, uh, in this country. I mean, I think it can be, we need to produce our own energy in America. If we do it, it changes the balance of, of trade payments uh, uh, into a positive for America. It produces American jobs and not just minimum wage jobs. These are well-paying jobs. There's so many things that flow from our producing our own homegrown energy that I want to be a part of this debate going forward. All right. Well, we certainly um, appreciate your thoughts today on energy, and we wish you well uh, in whatever the, the future holds for you. Governor Rendell, thank you. Thanks, Susan.